Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecturer in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short videos on problem solving techniques. In video number 9 we're going to take a look at SIPOC diagrams. So first of all, what is a SIPOC diagram? Well, before you begin any project to improve any process, you must first identify all the relevant elements of that process. And I stress relevant elements here. A SIPOC diagram is a good starting point to help define what these relevant elements are. So SIPOC stands for suppliers, inputs, processes, outputs, and customers. And throughout the process, the suppliers, S, provide the input I to the process P. The process you're looking to improve adds business value and this results in output O that should meet or exceed a customer's that C, expectations. And our SIPOC diagram takes the perspective that any procedure, any business system, no matter how complicated, can be broken down into three components that you see in the diagram here, input, process and output. And this forms the central part of our SIPOC diagram. So when should you use a SIPOC diagram? Well, it should only be used to describe the existing process as is and not the to be process. And it's a particularly useful tool when you need to answer questions such as what are all the inputs into the process? Who supplies the inputs to the process? And what requirements are placed on these inputs? You should also look at what are all the outputs of the process? Who the real customers of the process are? And finally, what are the requirements of these customers? And at all times, we want to concentrate on the relevant elements relating to our process that we're looking to improve. So how do you go ahead and draw a SIPOC diagram? Well, many variations on this, but the simplest version is like the one you see in front of you here. And here we have uh, five brown boxes at the top representing each of our SIPOC letters, suppliers, inputs, processes, outputs, and customers. And we usually break the process down into steps. Uh, I've got five high-level steps here at the bottom. Usually uh, anything from four to up as much as seven high-level steps would be sufficient to represent um, the process that we're taking a look at. So for each of the suppliers, inputs, outputs and customers and process steps, uh, we go through these um, one section at a time to identify all the relevant elements for each part of the SIPOC diagram. So let's take a look at a step-by-step -step procedure for to create a SIPOC diagram. So uh, this is very straightforward to do. You don't need any special software. You can do this on a whiteboard or a flip chart, uh, blackboard or uh, um, drawing software. Whatever you like to use can be used for this. But it is important to follow um, a step-by-step -step procedure as I'm going to describe now. Step number one should be to begin with the process. And anything from four to seven high-level steps are all that are needed to describe the process. So you should be able to describe even a complicated process um, with four to seven high-level steps. So that's step number one. Step number two, then, is to identify the outputs of the process. We look at the outputs first before we look at the inputs. So this is why we do this in step number two. So once we've identified the outputs, step number three is that we identify the customers that will receive the outputs of this process. Then we move on to the inputs in step number four, and we identify the inputs required for the process to function properly. And finally, we identify the suppliers of the inputs that are required by the process. So we use a SIPOC diagram to represent one process. If you have two or more processes, use a separate a second or third SIPOC diagram to represent the other processes. So let's take a look at an example. An example I'm going to use here is the example of prescribing um, medicines in a public hospital. And the, let's say the hospital, hospital authorities are looking to cut the costs associated with this process. They'd like to reduce costs, reduce errors and reduce duplicate prescriptions that might occur with a view to improving how medicines are supplied and controlled in the hospital. So step number one, we look at the process. And I'm describing the process of prescribing medicines in six high-level steps here. Uh, you can read them in front of you. The patient first meets the doctor and then makes a diagnosis. The doctor prescribes a medicine and the pharmacist dispenses this medicine. Um, the fifth step is that the patient history file is updated. And finally, a medicine is reordered so that supply can be maintained. And we use the six boxes to summarize this process uh, that you see at the bottom of the picture here. So we meet patient, goes to make diagnosis, goes to prescribe medicine, dispense medicine, update patient history, and finally reorder medicine. So our, the process of 
dispensing medicines in a public hospital can be described at a very high level using these six steps. Then we move on to step number two. And step number two allows us to identify the outputs of this process. So the outputs are fairly straightforward, a medicine, um, dose, frequency, recommendation, patient history file, a payment request for the medicine, and a new order for replacement drugs. These are all outputs of the process of prescribing a medicine. And the customer of these outputs are, of course, the patient. There will also be an administrator, a hospital administrator, looking after this. Um, health authorities may well be looking for um, um, invoices and so on to pay for uh, publicly supported patients. And finally, a drug company will get a new order. So these are all the customers of the outputs uh, of the process prescribing medicines. And then we take a look at steps four and five. And in step four, we look at the inputs. And the inputs into the process of the prescribing medicines are, uh, first off, very straightforward and obviously medicines itself. The patient history file will have to be looked up, so this is an input. Um, guidelines and regulations for dispensing the particular medicines, these will be inputs. Um, internal procedures uh, is also an input. And of course, training for the people involved in prescribing and dispensing the medicine. And the suppliers of these inputs are the drug company, um, distributors maybe of the drugs, regulatory agency to supply the guidelines and regulations, uh, and government which might also provide uh, things like laws, uh, regulations and of course uh, information about payments and support for public health patients. So when we put all this together, we can summarise um, all of the components um, of our SIPOC diagram to represent um, the process of prescribing medicine in a public hospital. So I've combined all the um, components that we looked at in the previous um, graphics, and you can see the way they look here. We have a SIPOC diagram that summarises, at a high level, all of the um, steps within the process, all of the outputs of this process and who those customers are, all of the inputs of the process and who the suppliers of those inputs are. And once I have done this, I should have a much better understanding of the process of prescribing medicines in a hospital. And I can apply this technique to almost any process that you care to mention, whether it's selling cars, uh, whether it's fixing something, whether it's developing a new software application, or looking at how a process works in your own business. A SIPOC diagram could very well be useful for you in this instance. If you found this um, analysis tool interesting, um, this and many other tools are discussed in my new book, An Introduction to Business Systems Analysis, which is about problem-solving problem techniques such as SIPOC diagrams and their strategies. It's available um, online at Amazon. Um, thank you for your attention. I hope you found this video very useful. Bye-bye.